For if I make you sorrowful, then who is he who makes me glad but the one who is made sorrowful by me? So Paul is saying, I don't want to come and be a downer on you guys because I'm so thankful and pleased by you all. You all make me glad. Why do I want to come and make you sorrowful? So what is he talking about? Well, he's referring to the rebuke he gave to them in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 that we'll look at in just a moment. But I'd like to go a little further in 2 Corinthians 2. And I wrote this very thing to you, lest when I came, I should have sorrow over those from whom I ought to have joy, having confidence in you all that my joy is the joy of you all. So now let's remind ourselves, we covered this in our study when we read 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and such sexual immorality as is not even named among the Gentiles. And boy, is that significant because the Gentiles were terribly perverse. In fact, in a Bible tour of Greece, we talk about a Caesar who had a teenage boy that he took as a sexual partner for a few years, and that boy eventually drowned in the Nile when they were in Egypt. And the Caesar turned that boy into a deity. He turned him into a god. He added him to the imperial cult, basically, the people, the Caesars that you worshipped. He tried to name a constellation in the sky after this child victim of this homosexual, but he failed at that. But he did establish a city in Egypt named after his victim. And this person was a Caesar. And that cult, the worship of this child who was the victim of a sexual predator, homosexual, that cult became the leading religion in that day. So that's how perverse the ancient world, the Gentile world, was. And in that context, Paul says to the Christians in Corinth, the sexual immorality among you is even worse than that which is among the Gentiles. Wow. That a man has his father's wife, and you are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he who has done this deed might be taken away from among you, Paul wanted them to disfellowship, to excommunicate this person, but they just accepted it. And so you go down to verse 9. I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexually immoral people. Yet I certainly did not mean with the sexually immoral people of this world, that is non-Christians, or with the covetous or extortioners or idolaters, since then you would need to go out of the world. So Paul is not saying in your daily business, in your life, with your family members who are not believers, he's not saying that you cannot participate and engage with unbelievers who are immoral because for the most part, unbelievers are immoral. He said, if that were my instruction, you'd have to go out of the world. You'd have to go to the moon to not defile yourself. He said, but I'm not talking about unbelievers. I'm talking about believers. Verse 11, but now I have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother. So anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral or a covetous or an idolater or a reviler or a drunkard or an extortioner, not even to eat with such a person. For what have I to do with judging those who are outside? Do you not judge those who are inside? And even from that statement, Paul is not saying, well, if somebody's not a Christian, you don't judge them. He's not saying that. If somebody sells child pornography, what, you can't rebuke them because they're not a believer? Of course you could rebuke them. 
So, of course, we judge those who are unbelievers. But in contrast, in comparison to my greater responsibility to judge those who are within the body, it's as though I don't have any concern with those who are outside of the body. That's just a statement of perspective. 